hey what's up i am michelle b this is channel nerds a channel where i document my journey growing my youtube channel and building my income so that you can do the same in this video i want to talk about not just how to get viewers on your youtube channel which is a topic that i talked about a lot before but also how to get those viewers to stick around getting people on your content and actually watching your videos is so important but the real goal is to get them to hit that subscribe button so that not only do they watch that first video but they also watch that video that you release the next week and the week after and so on and so forth. So this video is all about how to take those people on that journey so that you can create a small community of humans that dig your stuff. So my first tip for you, and it's an important tip, a tip that I learned early on in my journey is not to create a nipple piercing video. Yes, this is my first tip because it's the number one thing that I got wrong when I first started on YouTube. My story on YouTube essentially starts with a video that I made about getting my nipple pierced. I wasn't showing me getting my nipples pierced, by the way. Just talking about it. It's a video that got hundreds and thousands of views and many, many comments. It got so much love that I decided to create a nipple piercings part two video, which also went on to get lots and lots of views and lots of comments, which seems like a really great situation, but none of that love converted into subscribers. And what you want are people that convert into subscribers. It's kind of easy to target videos that you know will get a lot of views, videos that people are asking a lot of questions around. So some other videos that I made that I knew people were asking a lot of questions around were um, The Beginner's Guide to Epilation. That reeled in a nice 130k views, which was pretty good when I only had like probably under a thousand subscribers at that point. I also made a review of the Babyliss curling one, which reeled in only 3.3k views, but still really good for where I was at. All those videos delivered really valuable pieces of information, but essentially in the long run, they were worthless. If I had been releasing a guide to nipple piercing ebook or I had been selling my own epilator. Those videos could have been really useful to me. If I had an epilation or hair removal channel or a piercings channel, they could have also been useful to me. Instead, I got a few hundred thousand views from them and I got no actual subscribers and no long time viewers. So to wrap this point up, the only popular videos that you should be aiming to create are popular videos related to questions in your niche niche that people will watch, realize you are the expert on, and then click subscribe and maybe even sign up to your email list. The next one is one that I see people doing wrong a lot, and that is not making your value clear enough. You need to make it clear to people that you have a valuable channel for them, not just that you have a valuable, helpful, one-off video. So the main people that I'm trying to talk to are probably educational and inspirational YouTubers because this is more difficult if you are just creating a lifestyle type channel where you're trying to vlog every day or whatever it may be. So I start my channel nose videos by making it clear that my channel is going to be helpful for people who are trying to grow their YouTube channel. You don't necessarily have to start your videos in that way, especially if you are frightened that you'll have like a drop off of viewers or anything along those lines, but you can make it clear by mentioning it in your description by weaving mentions of other helpful videos that you have within your videos. In some way, shape or form, you need to be letting the people viewing your videos know that you have other videos that they're going to like and that they are really easily accessible if that person just hits that subscribe button. The next thing that you can do, and this is something that I have a pretty decent amount of experience with at this stage, is creating a series. So from late November last year to early January this year, my channel Michelle B, which is my main channel separate to this one, gained about 35k YouTube subscribers, which is a lot more than usual for me if you have watched my channel review series where I sort of analyze my channel on a monthly-ish basis. And the way that I did that was actually a two-prong method. So it was through intentional collaboration and a series. If you're interested a little bit more on collaboration and how that all works, I actually do have a whole video on that in my Thriving on YouTube course as well. It walks you through the whole process step by step because I know it's a bit of a scary one. So not only did I collaborate a lot, I collaborated with about five YouTubers within a period of one week, but then I followed that collaboration up with a mini series. So a lot of really epic content within a short time to keep those people who would come to my channel from those collaborations watching. The series that I created was a Reset Your Life series. The thing that 
that I probably did differently about this series is I created one video that recapped every single step in the series. So I created a video called How to Reset Your Life. I recapped what I was gonna go through in the next seven days. And then I said, subscribe if you want to keep up with this challenge. So that video got a nice 148K on its own. And there was a really, really big call to action because I was like, look, if you want me to expand on these topics, if you wanna walk through this step-by-step -step on how to reset your life for the new year, click subscribe because I have seven videos to go that you can watch. And these people were already engaged, so they were already warm. They'd watched that video and they were like, yes, I'm ready to reset my life. I'm gonna subscribe to this person. Then they'd watch a whole seven days worth of content, which would get them really deep into the Michelle B world, hopefully. They would build a far greater connection with me than if they just subscribed and then watched my video the next week. So I was able to quickly create people that would be long-term viewers because when you stick around for a seven day series, you're far more likely to watch the content thereafter. I feel like that was a little bit vague. Let me know if you do want me to create a whole video on how to set up a series and how to create a series, if you think that's something that would be helpful. The next thing that I wanna mention is having strong call to actions within your content. So this is a really simple one that you might be missing. And I know that it feels a little bit gross to ask people to hit that subscribe button, but it's really important throughout your channel journey, especially if you wanna create long long-term viewers. It's something that you need to be doing in one way, shape or form. One way that I like to do it is actually by putting a little graphic at the bottom of my videos so then I don't feel like I'm going subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. The graphic is kind of doing the talking for me. Some people do say that you should back it up with like three things. So you should have a sound effect, you should have a visual on the screen and you should have you verbally saying it because that's three different ways to actually, mm, I don't know. And if, you're, and if you're in your early days, I would say that it is definitely worth being a little bit more direct in asking people to subscribe. But if you're just sort of like getting into the world of asking people to subscribe, then feel free to copy exactly what I do. Add some sound effects in there so you still got a little bit of audio to back up your subscribe prompt. And it's a really strong like subscribe visual to show them like literally this is what you have to do to subscribe to my channel. The next thing that I wanna talk about is letting your audience know your story. I feel so much more connected to Hank and John Green because they have such a strong backstory. Eileen from Lavender, someone I've collaborated with before. She is a mega babe and she has shared her story a whole bunch on her YouTube channel. And it makes me feel far more, um, she feels more relatable to me. She feels more attainable to me. Phil DeFranco, really strong story. I'm far more likely to watch his videos because I feel like I know him because I know his story. Having an understanding of the context around a creator, where they came from, where they started, how they got to where they are, is a really helpful way to get people to stick around and become long-term um, viewers. So if you haven't created a video about your story, I would highly recommend doing that. I'm actually just polishing off my video for Michelle B. I interweave my stories a lot into my videos. I've never created a specific video for my story. So I'm really excited to do that. If you're not quite ready to make a whole video about your story, then feel free to just start slipping it into a video now and then. If you're not quite ready to make a whole video about your story, which I would recommend, then try and start slipping it into your videos now and then. Sit down and actually flesh it out and try to work it within your content so that people feel a stronger connection and are more likely to become longer term viewers. If you liked this video, you might like my video on how to create more engaging videos. I'm gonna have that linked on the screen. I talked about all the tools and techniques that I am using to create more engaging videos on my channel and on this channel a little bit. Subscribe to my channel if you want to create a thriving YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out my course if you're interested in a step-by-step -step guide to launching and growing a successful YouTube channel and I will see you soon.